Shalom, and this video is in detail about the seminar, the Secure Party Seminar of Redemption Sunshine Conference of Higher Light, Right Knowledge Revealed on July 28th and the 29th at 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., both days. The address is 12490 South Apaca Vinland Road, Orlando, Florida, 32. 836. Again, the address is 12490 South Apaca Vinland Road, Orlando, Florida, 32836. My name is Rachel and enjoy this video. Hey, shalom, shalom. This is Tyler Dark and KO Snow. Yeah, you're part. So, um, once again, we're here to tell you about the seminar. So, we're actually here in Orlando, Florida. I'm looking excited, you know, towards this event. This is going to actually be the most informative seminar yet. Um, we actually essentially going to start off by talking about how to do the commercial liens against these rogue agents. Um, we're going to go into property taxes. We're going to cover the um, A for V method. Um, we're going to cover uh, like just so many different things. Um, we're going to go into some history. We're going to go into some role play. So if you have not gotten your donations in, you need to get your donations in now. If you intend to donate online, I'm going to shut that down at 12 um, a.m. tonight, and you're going to be compelled to donate at the door, which is going to be actually $10 more. And let me say this. Some of you people, you're making donations, and you're not including a name and a phone number. If you're donating for the seminar, you need to list your name, the other person that you may be donating for, and a phone number where you can be reached. You're donating on Cash App, but you're not providing any information as to who you are. Now, if you got fiat that you just want to throw away like that, hey, I'm cool with that. Thanks for the donation. But otherwise, you need to inform us just who you are. So, again, this seminar is going to actually take place tomorrow, which is um, Saturday, um, July the 28th, from 12 noon to 6 p.m., and July 29th, from 12 noon to 6 p.m. The reason that I've decided to do two days, because one day was actually just not enough to get this information out. So with that, I suppose that they actually have some questions for me that you may actually ask and you're wondering about. So you want to watch this video in its entirety, and these questions will not be answered thoroughly here, but you will find your answer at the seminar. So with that, um, your pa, you could just start firing away. Okay, great. So we have a lot of questions, of course. There will be more answered in the workshop. Um, here's one question. Um, what is a secure party creditor? Yeah, thanks for that question. By the way, let me say this. This is not legal advice, not to be taken as legal advice, misconstrued as legal advice. This is strictly for educational, informational, entertainment purposes only. So nothing anyone's stating in this video is for legal advice. It's just information, education. Don't misconstrue it as legal advice. If you try to use anything in this video or any of my videos and fall flat on your face, you can only blame yourself. Research everything. Trust no one. Research everything. So a secure party creditor is basically someone that's actually taken themselves out of a corporate ward status. So with the birth certificate, you know, we're all made corporate wards of the state which means the state automatically has jurisdiction over us when we go into any kind of public court. So when you become a secure party creditor, you're placing certain agencies and organizations on notice, allowing them to be informed that I'm competent to handle my own affairs. I no longer need you to speak for me as an attorney. So when you're not a secure party creditor, what's going on? The birth certificate is essentially a bond that actually goes on the stock market and so on and so forth. When you do not become a secure party creditor, they appoint an attorney to control that bond. So they're actually drawn from that particular bond. But once you become a secure party creditor, you now have the capacity to control that bond. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Here's another question. Why is it important that we are very conscious of the language that we use when, it deal when dealing with contract law? Well, um, why do you think that is? Are we well, just going to say anything? I <laughs> no, I'm saying, I, well, <laughs> well, I'll say part of it. Um, it is important that we are con conscious of the words that we use because when we're in court, we talk to you know regular people, you know, 
in a conversation, you know, using regular English and, you know, the definition of person might be one thing when just talking to a brother or sister, but in court, the words are, mean totally something different. What which, is that word you just used again? Totally. Legal what? Legalese. Yeah. Yes, so we think that we're talking in regular English, but when you go into court, the words mean something totally different, and that's a big difference. Yeah, that was a pretty good um, answer to your own question, but the reason that I contend that is very important to be um, very cautious of what you do when you're actually engaged in contracts is because everything within this country is governed by contracts. It's contracts. You still hear people talking about the Constitution and they're wanting to argue the Constitution, but pretty much America is actually under the Uniform Commercial Code, which are contracts. Case in point, like if you sign... I just signed into this hotel. There was a contract that I had to sign to get checked in. So when you sign that contract, there's certain obligations that you're agreeing to. The guy told me, hey, well, if you smoke in the room, it's a $250 um, charge for smoking in the room. Without me signing that contract, there would have been no agreement. So, and I had the consent. So without my signature, there's no agreement. And so this is why we gotta be very extremely cautious of the contracts, like the driver's license. When we sign that contract, we're agreeing to everything within the driver motor vehicle manual. So that makes that an adhesion contract, which makes it debatable, which why we should always reserve our rights. Thank you very much. Oh gosh, I have a lot of questions then. Of course, more questions will be answered during the, the seminar. We hope to see you there. So all this contract law stuff going on, right? What does that have to do with the word of God, Yahweh? What, what is that, how is that mingled together? People try to separate the two. Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. There's a lot of people, uh, the so-called free man's movement, or the patriot movement, if you will. There's a lot of those people, they really don't believe in the Most High. I guess they believe in a God, but they do not believe in the God of the Bible. And so many of them actually come to me and say, Tell the Dot, why don't you just teach contract law? Why do you keep teaching this Bible, this comic book? And a lot of these people that say things of that nature, the uh, Egyptologists, some of them are Moors, because they really don't believe in a high entity. And people that come from that perspective, the first thing that I like realize about those people is they are telling people that they know law, but they really don't know law. Because if they knew law and that they actually done research of this law that's actually practiced in America and Britain, one of the requirements for every attorney was to study the Bible. You had to know the Bible because of all of this system of law came from the Bible. I mean, case in point, it's common sense, which is the common law. Because the common law is unwritten law, which is actually the biblical law. Now, in the Bible, it says, thou shalt not kill. Esau has that in his system. Do they not have this in the system? If you kill, what happened to you? 25 to life. You get 25 years of life, but it's common sense. That came from the Bible. It shows you that shall not steal. That came from the Bible. But this man's system uses that as well. So everything that they're using, they kind of like turned it topsy-turvy, but it goes back to the Bible. So I always tell people, if you study the scriptures, you will understand this. But you got to understand how Esau has actually got people to obligate themselves with the contract by signing the contract. So this is why it's important to understand the contract. Because when he talks law, he's talking contract. If there's no contract, there's no case. They don't have anything against you. So there has to be a contract in place in some, some shape, form, or fashion. Oh. Yeah, thank you for that. Well. Wow. Um, here's another question. As a secure party creditor, how can we resolve things like tickets on the road, child support issues, or student loans, for example? Yeah, that's a good question. So, like, as a secure party creditor, the way that you can resolve all of that, because according to um, 72 CFR, um, well, CFR 72.11, all crimes or commercial. So everything that we do is commercial. It's involved in commerce. So all of those tickets, everything that you just mentioned, it involves commerce. Like the whole child support is commerce. So it's commerce involved. So if you're a secure party creditor, what you could do is you could actually, since there's no real money, there's no gold or silver in circulations, as a secure party creditor, what you could actually do is set off or discharge the alleged debt because you can't pay it. So when you try and pay it with a, green, with a um, fiat currency, 
like a Federal Reserve note, you're essentially increasing the debt because you can't pay a debt with a debt, right? You can't do that. So, but you could discharge it and say, hey, I'm going to accept this for value until real money returns to circulation. But as a ward of the state, you can't do that because you're in a corporate ward status, which means you are subject, which is another word for a slave. That's why it's essential to be a secure party creditor. Let's go to this side for a minute. Um, the Queen Rachel right here and see what kind of questions she had. Thank you. What is the proper way to acquire my certified certificate of live birth? Well, I mean, that's, that's a good question, but a very um, extensive answer. So, I mean, the way to do that is that you want to get the long form. Like, if you're trying to authenticate the birth certificate, you want the long form, not the short one, because the long form has much more information. And so, if you want a true answer to that question, since it's so detailed, you could actually just order my DVD online about how to authenticate the birth certificate, or you can attend the seminar. I have that DVD at the seminar, but that's a pretty um, detailed question. There's certain things, certain people, you actually got to put on notice, but you definitely need the long form to do that. How can I correct the status on my husband and our children, or vice versa? Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent question. So, if your husband is, um, well, you didn't answer that question, so I won't bring it up. But your husband would actually have to become a secure party creditor just like you. He'll have to put the same organizations on notice like you. Now, if your children haven't reached the legal age of majority, there's no um, reason for them to become secure party creditors because they're still minors. They have to be the legal age of majority to have any kind of say-so over their life in the law. You know, in some states that could be 18, some states that's 16. So until they reach the legal age of majority, what you want to do is you want to list them on your security agreement as your property for educational purposes only. And then once they reach the legal age of majority, instead of going and signing themselves back over to the state, they may want to actually, you know, revoke all of those um, adhesion contracts and become a secure party creditor. So it's not really necessary for your children to apply for the secure party creditor. You just list them as property on your security agreement, which should be referenced on your UCC-1. Thank you. I have some questions on property taxes. Um, the first question is, are there exemptions to or assistance for property taxes? So um, when you say exemptions, the only way that you're actually going to be exempt from any kind of property taxes is you have to get the allodial title if it's dealing with a land or a home or if you're dealing with a car you have to get the manufacturer's statement of origin and the only way to get these things is when they actually come off the assembly line so the DMV has an unrevealed contract with all car dealerships so when you go into the car dealership and you pay for the car the car dealer actually already sells that um, he sends that title the original title the manufacturer statement origin over to the department of state so you can't get that because they already have this invisible contract with them so this is where people even when they pay off their car they give them a certificate of title if you look at the word certificate it's not a true title it's not a true title so in order to really not pay these property taxes you're going to have to get the mso and the allotal your title to the property. Now, is there ways to do that? Yes, but they try to make it exceedingly difficult. If you want to do it with a car, you have to pay that car totally off when it's coming off the assembly line. Otherwise, the car dealership sends it over to the state. So they're still out there, but you got to be able to work your way around it to get it. And you can't do that as an incompetent ward of the state, which is why everyone should be becoming a secure party creditor. Now, if you are a contract law expert, there may be no need to file documents because you can handle everything viva voce by voice. If you're a really good orator and you know this, there's no need to file the, back, the documents. But I'm telling you, 99% of the people can't do that. You, they think they can, and they think they understand the language that's actually being spoken, but they really don't. Okay, back to SPC. Um... Is the SPC considered sovereign, and can a sovereign operate as a secured party creditor? Well, I mean, so 
you know, first of all, giving all praises to the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So all of us are born sovereigns, right? Um, we're born sovereign. When, when we're born, we're sovereign. We ha we're in a sovereign capacity. Because that goes to Genesis 1 and 8. The Most High gave Adam dominion over everything. So man is sovereign. Man controls everything. So, but sh shortly after we're born, um, mom informs the state that she has more property for the state. So that sovereignty is signed over by way of the live record of birth, which is actually sent then to the Department of Vital Statistics. And a birth certificate is created. So when the birth certificate is created, the son and daughter becomes a child, which becomes property of the state, which is where you have people like CPS or organizations that can move in and snatch the child out of the home at will. So a sovereign is not really a secure party creditor. A sovereign is someone that actually is living on their own land. They're, they're residing in their own community and they're not taking any kind of governmental benefit and they do not operate in commerce. They live completely off their own land, they're growing their own livestock, and so on and so forth. So if you still want to operate in commerce, and you don't want to live, you know, like the natives, then you want to be a secure party creditor, because you go and act in, in commerce when you want to, and then when you don't, you say, hey, I'm not part of your society, I don't wish to contract with you today. So for me, it's being a secure party creditor, because I don't want to live like a hermit, I don't have a community yet. Now, if we have... We have enough people to come together, establish our own community. That's the time to be sovereigns because that's what the Native American communities are until they sell out and they get these casinos. When they buy into the casinos, hey, they give up their sovereign capacity to go and play with Esau for, you know, the fiat currency. And my last question is, what is the difference in the blueprints of a SPC and operating as a sovereign? Again, yeah, kind of like just answer that. So when you operate as a sovereign, you don't use any governmental benefits. Your children don't go to public school. Um, you're not going into the supermarkets. You don't have any bank account. Whereas as a secure party creditor, you could have this stuff, but you know how to control it because you should be a contract law expert. But the problem with a lot of people that's becoming secure party creditors, they file paperwork, but they don't really have a clear understanding or what it is that's really going on. They're just putting papers on file, and then as soon as they get a commercial presentment, they don't know what to do. Then they call me, or they call someone else to help them. It's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to know how to handle contracts, because contracts is the law. And everything that people are getting in, I don't care what it is, some shape, form, or fashion, they consent it. If you got CPS or someone coming to your home, you consent it. You agreed whether you realize it or not. You agreed by way of contract, whether it was actually expressed, implied, or written. You agreed in some shape, form, or fashion. So you need to become secured party creditors. Like all the people at this seminar, they should be getting my books. Even if you're not coming to the seminar, you should be ordering the books because you need to learn to use this language. And that's what people are not getting. You can't just simply file documents. You need to learn to use the language and comprehend the language that they're speaking in because that's what getting people jammed up they get an offer and if the offer says um i order you to do this i order you to do that well one man doesn't have a right to order another man to do anything unless he's broken the law that's the law so be we're all equal under the law that's a maximum of law so if someone sends me that and I haven't broken a law. You can't order me to do anything. You understand what I'm saying? So they need to learn the language and actually what's being expressed. Well, once again, I want to make sure you guys know when you donate, please leave a proper name, email, and reason why you're donating. We prefer the cash app before PayPal. It's simple. In the comment box, you can tell, tell the doc exactly what you're donating for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. So, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So make sure you put a phone number there and some names of what you're donating for. Um, you know, I'm not, I never claim to be a psychic or anything because say, well, oh, yeah, this is, um, and I'm not a damn genie. You didn't see me come out of a bottle or anything. So I can't figure out if you just, as far as I'm concerned, as far as the law is concerned, if you just donate, I can just take it as a donation. Like your pa said, hey, 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 hey so-and-so, um, John Doe just made a donation, even statewide. Yeah. So get your mind right, King. So I surmise you have a few more questions there. 
<laughs> Gosh, we can go on and on. Actually, quite a bit has been covered in this session. Um, I was just going to just um, reiterate and just encourage everybody to come and sign up because this is an education that we don't get in the public school system and even outside of that, and it'll change your life. Uh, yeah, uh, do, do I? <laughs> Do I? Everything has a time and a place. So we're just going to make sure we become more e e aware and evolve from the basic education that you may have received. Um, because this is definitely going to change your life. And it is very potent and very powerful. So definitely come. Go to the website. Go to the website sign up now. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, donation is $80 for singles and 150 for couples online, male and female couples. And at the door will be $90 for singles and 180 for couples. So, don't miss it. Yeah, so go get your donations in now. Um, there's a lot of people. And by the way, you people that invited me out here to Florida, it was supposed to be 10 of you. So far, only 5 of you have signed up. So you need to go ahead and actually make your donations. Get your donations in now because it cost me a few thousand dollars to come out here, and I don't have I don't have fiat currency to throw that around like that. So keep your word. Go ahead and get your donations in. And so everyone else, you can go ahead and get your donations in. Um, thank you for listening. Like this video, share this video. And so we're gonna sign out. We're gonna say shalom. Hey, someone. Went, what? And make sure you go to truedisciples.org twodisciplesofchrist.org slash shop to get the books, the DVDs, and the donate for the Secure Party Creditor Packet. <laughs> she said it already. Shalom. Shalom.